Hi, I'm Doug Reynolds. Welcome to my monthly video blog that I do for Sacramento, California. This month's video is for the end of March and the beginning of April. Well, the statistics are remaining about the same. We're just kind of bouncing around how we have been in the last eight or nine months. Those of you that are following my uh, video blog and my blog and everything about statistics for Sacramento County. The uh, median price jumped up a little bit. It went from 170000 to just under 180000 uh, at 179.9, so bounced up about ten thousand dollars. We've been seeing that for months, you know, going up, then it'll drop, and then it'll bounce up again. Um, seen a lot of that, some more of the same there. The month's worth of inventory is still right around three, so still very low inventory, still considered a seller's market in the county here. Uh, this month, I wanted to talk about a couple of things first. Just wanted to talk about the tax credit that's coming up uh, to the end of the expiration here. So just a reminder, it uh, you have to be have an accepted offer by April 30th. So by the end of April, you have to have an accepted offer, meaning you need to submit that offer probably a week beforehand in order for the seller to look at it and sign and accept it by uh, April 30th, by the end of April there. As long as you have that accepted offer by the end of April, you've got two months till the end of June to actually get the deal closed. If you meet those criteria, and there's additional criteria you can find out on my blog, and I've got all the information, the detailed information there. If you're a first-time home buyer, you get you can qualify for the up to eight thousand dollars, and that's if you haven't owned a home within the last three years. And if you're a move-up buyer, you can qualify for the up to sixty-five hundred. We've talked about that criteria. Go on my blog; you can find the uh, additional criteria for both of those. Um, let's see what else I wanted to talk about. Uh, writing clean offers it's it's a term that's used a lot in the industry a lot of agents say hey you know we've got a lot of interest in this property we have multiple offers send me a clean offer well a clean offer is, is a lot of things um, clean offer usually doesn't have a credit in it uh, a lot of first-time home buyers they're having a tough time coming up with the money required for the down payment for the closing costs. So in the past, what a lot of buyers have been doing is asking for a credit from the seller, uh, usually 3% or a couple thousand dollars or something, to help with their closing costs. Well, now that competition between buyers has basically skyrocketed. Um, a lot of buyers are having to choose to leave that credit out. That keeps the offer a lot cleaner. Um, another thing is that in the past, typically buyers would ask for a pest report. Well, when the lender for that buyer sees that in the offer, they're then going to be requiring a clear Section 1 pest report. Section one is any, if there's an infestation of termites or if there's any dry rot on the property, they're going to want to see the report showing that's been fixed. So a clean offer doesn't address anything having to do with a termite or a pest report. And then during the inspection period, the buyer has the right. They can go ahead and have a company come out and, uh, you know, do a pest report. But then they have that information to do whatever they want with it. If, if they're okay with, you know, if maybe there's only a couple of items in the report and they're okay with it, well, it's not going to cause a problem in the escrow. So keeping it clean, you, you don't want any credits. You also want to leave the uh, pest report off of the offer. Um, some of the other things with keeping it clean is you can distinguish who's paying what costs. Well, if you have a good amount of funds available. You might want to maybe split some of the costs between the buyer and the seller. That cleans up the offer. Uh, another thing with if you're writing offers on short sales, you really want to typically a seller will pay for a home warranty for a buyer of a new home. Well, it's very hard to get approved by the short sale lender to pay for 
home warranty. So when you write an offer on a short sale, in order to keep that offer clean, you need to uh, leave out the home warranty and then just, you know, you can decide whether you want to purchase it or not during the escrow period. So there's a lot of talk about clean offers and those are some examples of, you know, how you can keep your offer clean. Another example is having a low amount of escrow time period. You know, if, if you write an offer, you want at least 30 days. Uh, a lot of sellers, they don't want to see anything beyond 30 day escrow periods. So you want to make sure you get a lender that can really facilitate that and get an escrow done as quickly as possible. If you're getting into 45, 60 day escrows, that's just not very clean. Um, another way you can do it is you can actually go ahead and volunteer to shorten your contingency periods for your home inspection, your appraisal, and your loan. The standard is 17 days. Sometimes you might want to maybe take a couple of days off there. You might want to shave you know, three or four days off or something if you feel comfortable to be able to get the home inspection and the appraisal done in that time period. That makes it a little bit cleaner. So. Just want to talk about that because it's a huge issue right now with buyers competing. There's only a little bit of time left to get the tax credit. So those are a couple of ways that you can be writing some clean offers to uh, really appeal to the seller and probably be able to have a better chance over some of the other buyers out there. Um, other than that, there there's not really much talk yet about possibly extending the tax credit. The tax credit's been extended twice already. If you remember quite a while back, it was $7,500 and you had to pay the money back. Then it got changed to $8,000. And then this last time they, they extended it to including the move up buyers. Um, but each time it got extended, there was a lot of talk beforehand of it. Hey, you know, it might be getting extended again. They're talking about it and we're not really sure. This time, I haven't heard anything about it yet. So uh, my feeling is that I think the national real estate market on a whole is pretty much stabilized fairly well enough to where I think the uh, federal government is probably feeling comfortable to uh, stop kind of doling out money there. We've been spending quite a bit of money in uh, government over the last couple of years here. So I think it sounds like this tax credit, I, probably is not going to get extended. It is possible, but uh, I haven't heard any word yet that, that they're working on that. I think they're focusing on healthcare so much right now that they're um, just not paying a whole lot of attention to the housing market right at this time. So if there is information that does come up in terms of the credit being extended, um, I will definitely be blogging about it. I'll be talking about it next month. But as of right now, it looks like this might be the end of the credit. So. You've got, as of this date on the video, it's St. Patrick's Day. I got my St. Patrick's Day green on there. Uh, you got about a month and a half to get an accepted offer. So depending on what time you watch this video, you need to get an accepted offer by the end of April. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. Check my blog out. Uh, feel free to check back mo next month. I'll have a new, new video talking about the topics in Sacramento. And uh, you can also follow me on, on Facebook. That's a pretty easy way for a lot of fans to follow me on Facebook with just regular blog updates about uh, just what's going on in the market and everything like that. So I hope you have a great day. Thanks for stopping by.